All right, on this stop, y'all are gonna learn about homemade instruments. So you can look through the house and find something in the house to, to make music with. Like a jug, okay? You can put you some checkers in it. However you wanna do that, you can blow on it, okay? So you can find a jug, cup, anything like that. Make some music with it. Y'all ever got anything around the house and beat on it like a drum or something like that? So we're doing the same thing. That's what we're doing, except we're going to taking it one step further. This is a bucket base. You stand up, you play it this way. Okay, easy to make. Stick a bucket, stick a string through a bucket. Find you a stick in the backyard. Seven bucks. You're good to go. You're playing music. And it'd be good for like if you have a bunch of friends over, sleepovers, or family gathering. Y'all get together and play a bunch of music and just have fun making some homemade instruments. Any questions about any of this stuff? Okay. All right. Who knows what this is? It's what you wash your clothes on? Yes, it's a washboard. I bet you don't use one no more. Probably not. Probably not. But you can, if you can find one, or find you anything with little ripples on it. Okay? And then find you something metal. Spoon will work. See? And then you can turn the radio on, turn your jam on in your room, turn YouTube on. Because I figure every one of y'all watch YouTube. But... Anyway, and then you can make you can make your own music. You can play along with the radio. Cool. All right. This is something that's always been around, but you can make your own at the house with a comb and a piece of paper. Wrap your piece of paper around the comb, and then stick your lips up to one side of it and hum into it. Make your own homemade kazoo. Because all this is is a piece of paper that vibrates. That's all it is. And if it tears up, you just take it out, put you another piece of paper in and make another one. Cool? Mm -hmm. These you have to buy. You can't really make these I know of. Harmonicas. See? Good little cheap instrument you can tote in your pocket. Who knows what these are? Originally, they would have been ribs if you like barbecued ribs, okay? That's what these are. These, you hold them like this. See, and that's the way you do it. You get one in each hand, and you can have a ball, okay? So when you get done eating your barbecued ribs, wash them off real good so you don't slam barbecue everywhere, okay? And they don't slide out of your hand and poke your sister's eye out, okay? There's that, and then here's my favorite, the spoons. Just two spoons go to the cabinet. Uh, you might wanna ask mom first which ones you can borrow. These I've had for about 35 years. I've lost them, found them, lost them, found them, that kind of thing. So go get you two spoons, hold one like that, the other one like that, and then do it like sumo wrestlers, belly to belly. Like two big fat sumo wrestlers, okay? Belly to belly, make sure you got a little space between them. Then pick you out a song. And you can get higher or lower, you say, well, that's one sound. Well, if I come up here, if I come back here and let it slap, See? Easy done. You wanna give it a shot? Sure. <laughs> there we go. What else we got? What else we got? So do I hold it like right here? Yep, hold one between those and then one between there. And turn that one over. Like that. And then you try to hold them. <laughs> 
you try to hold them and pop them together on your leg. And then here's some wooden ones. Now these are carved by Mr. Joe to shops at work that volunteers here at the mill. Okay? Uh, these are really nice. But I like the sound. It sounds more like a horse galloping. Okay? So that's the way those, and you can buy cheater spoons, pretty much any kind of spoons you want uh, to play with that way. Uh, this is my favorite. It's not a musical instrument. It's a booger box. It's just to annoy your parents and your siblings and your neighbors. It don't make anything other than a loud noise, okay? But even if you don't make instruments, find something like this. Because you imagine, if you was playing in the yard and it got dark and you was playing, I think you call it man hunt now instead of hide and seek. And you heard that in the woods. Would you stay outside? You wouldn't, would you? No, and I bet you could run your sister slam out of her bedroom if you hid under her bed before she went to sleep. And then once she lay down, go. You think she'd run? Mama. Yes. Yes. Oh, and you could get you could get your two cousins. Yeah. So, any questions on any of this? that you would like to ask. What is that thing? What is this? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is rosin. It's actually for a fiddle bow. Uh, you can get it off of a pine tree. You know the gold stuff that looks like honey on the side of a pine tree? Mm -hmm. Don't taste it. It don't taste like honey. <laughs> okay. It's awful. But what they'll do is they'll take rosin, boil it down, get most of the water out of it, and pour it in these little molds. And then this, makes the string real sticky. And that's what causes it to vibrate. Cause this right here, all it does is vibrates and then the can amplifies it. Like you wanna hear a booger breathe. See, simple as that. But find you some stuff around the house, make you some stuff to play with, make you some stuff to have fun with. Okay, cool. To wrap this up, I'm going to tell y'all a little story about the booger box and how it came, how I came to learn about the booger box, which is this, the booger box. It's what my grandpa called it. We never did figure out why, but me and my cousin, one thing he'd always do is he'd come to us one day when we was bored just around in the yard. He'd come to us and he said, here youngs, he handed us two of these and said, here, go down there behind the neighbor's house and play with these in the woods. Well, at first we wasn't sure exactly why he was doing that. And then we figured out later, he didn't much care for that particular neighbor. So the neighbor would hear this behind his house in the woods. You could imagine what that done to a person's nerve. Well, I was asking Papa how this come about. Did he see somebody make one? Did he find one? What was going on? So, Papa started to tell me a story. Uh, I had an Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred. Bald as an onion, had a knot on the side of his head. Don't know what it was, but all his kids thought it was pretty cool. So, Uncle Fred found him a nice 
pretty bride started dating. Well, they got married. But when they decided to go on their honeymoon, my grandpa called an old friend of his that he used to ride trains with. Uh, name was Boozer. He called Boozer and another buddy, and he said, if y'all would, uh, need y'all to meet me over at Fred's house this Saturday night. Right about dark, they'll be coming back home just right after dark. And we need to welcome him home proper like. So Papa showed up, Boozer and another fellow walked up. He handed him one of these. It's made out of a coffee can. This one's a small can. The bigger the can, the deeper the growl goes. So if you make it out of a gallon can or a big coffee can, it's really deep. <laughs> okay. All right. So he hands it to it and he tells Boozer, he said, if you don't mind, go over there and get under the bedroom. Well, back then, the way houses were built, you didn't have all the underpinning under a house. You could lean under a house and see slam under it to the other side. That's why you hear older folks say, when I was little, we could count the chickens through the floorboards in the house. It's because there was nothing covering them up. So, Fred goes and lays, or uh, Boozer goes and lays down under the bedroom. He hands it to the other fellow and he says, you go in there and you hide under the bathroom. He said, all right. Pop said, I'm going to go get right up under the bed. So that's what they done. Well, they went in there, crawled under there. Papa waited. They heard the car pull up, heard Fred and his new bride get out and come in the house. Uh, they come in, piddled around a little bit, heard him go to bed, seen the lights go out through the holes in the floor. About the time the lights went out is about the time my papa went <laughs> like that. Fred jumps up out of bed, <laughs> forgets completely about his new bride that he needed to save her from the booger. He runs into the bathroom. Papa said that when he was in the bathroom, his buddy said he could hear Fred's feet going. Don't know what he was doing or why he went to the bathroom, but he did forget something. All right. So the guy in the bathroom, he turns loose on his booger box. Then Fred screams like a girl and comes running out of the bathroom. This time he remembers what he forgot the first time. He grabbed his new bride, going to save her took her through the house, they run into the kitchen, they heard Fred pick the phone up while his other buddies in there under the kitchen starts going. <laughs> Fred screams, throws the phone somewhere in the neighborhood of the kitchen, grabs his bride, runs out the door, and Papa said the last thing I heard, they heard him screaming over to the neighbor's house was, there's a booger in the house, there's a booger in the house. That's why we call it the booger box. <laughs>